we're, we all want to leave our impact on the world, but that makes it sound like a footprint, like it's under our, you know, like we're like somehow we've left, but we're not leaving. And I think that when we live, um, Lawrence, you shared um, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking and you were talking about living your legacy. And I was like, oh, that is something. And I don't think that many people think about that. So, um, I mean, let's talk about it. Why don't we, you were about to tell me when, what happened when you retired. Cause you know, if you're, if you're approaching, you know, retirement age, people think they want to retire. <laughs> I just saw a piece in Forbes, maybe it was Forbes, um, about someone who retired early at 30 and now they're going back to work and I didn't care to read why, but I just thought how boring to be constantly sipping Mai Tais and just like lying there waiting for the earth to turn. Uh, it seemed not very fulfilling because you still have to fill your time. So what happened when you retired at 57? Well, I lived in 13 countries. By the way, good morning, Alison. Hi. Uh, and good morning, everybody. I lived in 13 countries, and I had the most incredible life. And what spurred me to be who I am and to live how I wanted to live was because my dad taught me to to first of all that i was by an accident of birth i'm privileged and this is something we forget so i've lived with gratitude he also taught me values principles ethics morals and he taught me to um adhere to those throughout my life so i've always tried to maintain my um values and principles and ethics and so on. And so I lived in many countries and I was able to learn a lot of things. And the, the legacy we have, we actually live it every day because we are adding to the, the, the enrichment of our lives. If we are aware and if we want to be aware and if we're passionate, if we're not passionate and if we're not aware of what going on, what's going on, we meander through life in our comfort zone of mediocrity. And I never wanted to be mediocre. I never ever wanted to be one of the masses. I wanted to be me. I wanted to be able to have the courage to stand up for who I believe I am and how I believe I want to live and how I've wanted to live. That's why I lived in 13 countries because I wanted to see the world. And so the enrichment of, the, of my life and it can be for everybody and anybody is your attitude of how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your surroundings. So I retired, yes, at 57, but then I started immediately another business because I did not want to be surrounded by people my age and talk about the 60s and the 70s and then the 80s, which who cares? I don't care. <laughs> I did 2030. I'm more interested in what's going to happen. I want to be a part of it. And so there's a motivating factor to not rest on my laurels and to look forward to something that I can contribute to in a positive way. So Isn't it, doesn't it seem so weird that when people retire, their, their motivations, I mean, the traditional retirement, first of all, it sounds so dull, but uh, it, the traditional retirement is to step away from your lifelong striving to then what are you looking forward to learning to play golf? I don't, I don't know what that looks like. What it, when you retired, what did you do? What did you, first of all, what did you expect to be doing? And then what, what, what drove you to start that for that next business? Well, first of all, if you look forward to Friday, you're, you look, you're shortening your life. Oh. If you look forward to Monday, 
you're lengthening your life. So the people who look forward to Friday and look forward, I've only got five more years till I retire, they're shortening their lives. I think that is a shocking thing to a state of affairs. You've got to look forward to tonight, tomorrow morning, next week, on Friday, next month, next year. And if you do that, you you can only you can do that principally if you have passion for what you do. If you love what you do and you love life, you won't look forward to retirement. You won't look forward to Friday. You look forward to the next event. What's the next event? You know, I'm I'm close to eight years old, and I don't feel at all like that. I'm, I feel like I'm in my fifties, and I really don't care about age. Right now, I'm looking and I'm saying, how can I? be better? How can I be better than I was yesterday? How can I help people be better than they want to be for themselves? How can I influence anybody in a positive way? These are all things that are exciting because we can. We can make a difference to ourselves to be better every day. How can we, how can we improve ourselves? How yeah. can we help others improve themselves? If they want to be they don't, there's nothing you can do about it. doesn't matter. Next, just carry on. Life is too short to worry about those who don't care about themselves. Well, you just blew my mind with that mic drop moment. If you're looking forward to Friday, you're shortening your life. Yeah. Like, pow. Yes. I... I, I mean, let, let's back up a second because something that I, you... you um, well, for those of of out there who don't know us, I'm Allison Lane. I help women get their books published and launch as bestsellers and award winners, and uh, and and I truly want to see more women publish their books. Um, and Lawrence, your I, I was just telling you before we went live that I was reading your one of your recent newsletters in your amazing LinkedIn newsletter from ordinary to exceptional. And you said this, uh, you said, I, which I had to write down, my mission is to live as long as possible, as healthy as possible, and to help anyone interested to do the same. And I thought, holy poo. Uh, and you and then you said, be bold and go for your dreams or timidly accept your lot. And that really spoke to me. First of all, you're you're what, 77? Yeah, 78 plus two. Yeah. Oh, 78. Mm. Happy birthday. No, uh, yeah. And and to think, you know, we don't we don't often have that. We think of uh, I want to be as healthy as possible for as long as possible, but that's not the same thing. That's not, a, you hear that like as a cautionary tale, like, oh, I'm trying to stave off osteoporosis, but that's not what you're saying. I think you're saying I'm vibrant. I'm contributing. I am well, what you said is be bold and go for your dreams or timidly accept your lot. And that, that you, you can see people when they're like, they're, they're fine being on the conveyor belt, but you, there you are running alongside going like, Oh, I'm going to go this other way. And that's what gives me such um, energy about what you share because it's the, by the time you're, you know, 50 or approaching 60, there is this assumption, maybe it's an American assumption that, you know, you're close to retirement, which, which just the word retire, we'll oh, talk about it in a minute. It's horrible. I, I had to look it up. The word retire means to fade away. And to be quiet and secluded and not seen by many people and involving little contact reserved. And it just sounds like 
first of all, why would we, why would we want that for anyone? I, I want to hang out with you because you're much wiser and you have so much more perspective than I do. Cause I, in my head, I'm still 27 and thanks to yes, that's, that's <laughs> what, um, being a redhead and your mother just keeping you in the shade for life was like, um, <laughs> But that's, that's the thing, especially around the people I serve, is that they get to a certain age and they think, uh, I have all this wisdom and I don't want to, you know, and God comes for all of us. And I want to put what I know or what I've experienced into a book. Allison, how do I, is that possible? First of all, the answer is always yes. There's always a way take it from a 25 year marketer. There's always a way for everything. And there's always a faster way than you think. But, but sometimes it does take that, that moment of when people see the horizon, and then they see the, the people around them sort of like, oh, having like health issues or they lose a spouse and they, something snaps them into action. And that's what I think you never had that problem snapping into action. You're like an action figure, 13 countries. Um, and one of on your recent trips, you got shot at, but then also the next day you had a nice nap. I mean, who does that? That sounds nuts. <laughs> Uh, so my question is really about these lessons that we should all absorb. Can you, can you talk about the, these, how, how you how you live your life and maybe what we could all take with us today or well, what I, selfishly what I can. So, so if you, if you're going to a doctor's waiting room, a clinic and you see people coming in there hobbling in there with the push chairs or whatever those things are called or you know and you look at them and you think oh shame that poor guy i wonder what's wrong with him and you find out that he's in his 50s or his 60s that is a scary thing when you look at the fact that 70 percent of non-communicable diseases are preventable 70 percent approximately cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes type 2, lots of cancers are preventable. What's the common denominator? Food. Food. Mindset. Exercise. If you go on to something called PubMed.gov, PubMed.gov, which is where all the scientific published papers are from around, scientists around the world, and you put any disease you care to mention, I don't care what it is, and next to it put antioxidants, Alzheimer's, and then antioxidants, you'll find 12,000 studies on antioxidants and Alzheimer's. Who knew? And yet Alzheimer's is considered the diabetes three now. How do we get, what is, what is Alzheimer's? We, we're inflama inflaming the brain even more with sugar. Go to the old people's home. Mm. What do you give them? You give them cookies and, and pie, candy, candy stuff and sugary stuff. That's inflammation. You're making it worse. You're, wow. you're, you're infl inflaming the, the, the body's becoming more, it's, it's getting inf inflammation, becomes inflamed, becomes, uh, it gets inflammation. So, Pain. What is pain? It's inflammation because we eat junk. 80% of our, of the U.S. population is inadequately, is feeding itself with food that it shouldn't be eating in the, in the, let me put it this way. The triangle, the pyramid of food in Europe is exactly the opposite of what it is here. Exactly the opposite. The food pyramid in Europe is mainly vegetables and fruit and things like that. And at the very top, you've got the carbs and the, 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 the 
you know, the sugary stuff that we shouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm. In America, it's the exact opposite. Go to a hotel and what do they give you for breakfast? They give you what you like. Yes, because it's sugar, it becomes addictive. Sugar and salt become addictive. So what do we do? We, we please ourselves by eating the stuff we shouldn't be eating. Look at the obesity. 60% of the U.S. population is overweight. Overweight. 30% is morbidly obese. So when you look at that and you say, well, do I want to be like that? Hell no. I do Pilates every day. I ride horses for four hours at a time in the Andes Mountains. I swim. I ride my bike. There's nothing I don't do and nothing I won't try. I don't care. In my Pilates classes, the youngest, the oldest person apart from me is in their 40s. Huh. And I don't care if I look like an idiot. I really don't. And of course, I'm not as supple as I was when I was, or when these other people are in there, who cares? Yeah. But at least I do it. I just saw the other day this song that don't let the old man in. That that song, it's about death. Don't let the old man in. It's a beautiful song. Huh. And my point is, live long, as long as possible, as healthy as possible. How do you do that? By the right choices. Just do the right, do what you know to be right. I've got at least 30 documentaries that I have here that I'd make a point. The last one, for example, you are, we are what we eat. Take a look at that one. It's on Netflix. I mean, you start looking at these types of documentaries that are not um, financially motivated or politically motivated, just documentaries. And you'll see and you say, my gosh, for example, I haven't eaten chicken in America for the last 20 years. Why? I'm not interested in absorbing hormones and in, and and um, antibiotics. The, I was part of a. I was part of the uh, board of directors of National Planning in Colombia, South America, and we found little boys of ten starting to form breasts, and little girls of seven with menstrual cycles, and little girls with facial hair. We said, "My goodness, what's going on?" And we made a study and we found that the cheapest form of protein was chicken. And when we saw that, we said, wait, what's wrong with that? Well, where do these chickens come from? What are they feeding them on? They're in little cages. They cannot move for all their lives. They put the lights on 24 seven so that it's eating all day and all night. Then they inject them with hormones and that's what we're feeding our kids. So a little child that's, you know, weighing 70 pounds is taking a disproportionate ingestion of hormones and antibiotics because they put antibiotics because they put one cage on top of the other and they're pooping on each other. It's disgusting. So, you know, we look at these things and if we become, if we take the, look, I, I sometimes give talks and I say to people, who is Angelina Jolie's husband? And they all know. Um, where's the next show for Taylor Swift? And they'll know. But then I say, where's your liver? Oh, silence. Mm. Much less, what does it do? So we know a lot of trivial nonsense, but we don't know what's really important for ourselves. We don't, and we have not taken the time to take care of ourselves. On a plane, the, air, the flight attendant says, in case of emergency, put oxygen on you first and then your kids. Yep. And I used to say that's asinine, but it's not. If you don't care, if you take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of anybody else? And taking care of yourself is being aware. It's knowledge. It's learning. It's seeing. What do I want and what do I not want? What do I want? I want to live as long as possible, as healthy as possible. I just came back yesterday from Washington from a medical conference. The week before that, I was in, Los, in South Carolina, planning my trip to Alaska, I'm planning to go to Europe in September. There's nothing I want to do, there's nothing to stop me from doing what I want to do. Mm. Nothing except what's in here. And there, what, there, how would you do, do that? With proper nutrition, with exercise, with mindset. You know, it's, it's all about what do you want? 
You want to retire? What are you going to do? Right. What do you want? You know, I always say to people three questions. I have three questions for everybody. Who are you? Tell me in five words. In five words, tell me who you are. The next question is how well do you know yourself? Because when things are good, oh, we all love each other. It's hunky-dory. But when there's a problem, how do you handle it? And the third question is what do you want? That's the big one. People don't know. I want to be happy. Okay. Happiness is a state of mind. I want lots of money. Really? How much? What are you going to do with it? Questions. What do you want? So if you know what you want, you can at least plan daily towards your goal of what you want. So when we talk about living longer, healthier, which is what I want, mm -hmm. living longer, healthier, with no excuses. What are the excuses? We all make excuses. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have regrets. You know, so... Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about regrets, because uh, and uh, it, you know if if this resonates with with you at all, um, you know, folks tuning in, whether it's live or not, leave a let us know in the chat. You know, let just hashtag legacy, and we'll reach out because Lawrence has so much to share, and and if nothing else this should this you know friday um inspirational chat should be a kick in the tuchus for all of us to figure it out instead of sort of like being led like you know robots to the next step which in American culture is work, 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 work until you retire and you're released from work and work is toiling and retirement is some golf vacation, but n neither of those is true. And also the, like, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life is, is also a little bit pie in the sky for people who are just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm working, but I also am living. And I think the living part, the living and being fulfilled, knowing yourself so that you, you can figure out your legacy and empower yourself to um, more deliberately live because all of our time on earth is limited. We all have some, some kind of expiration date, right? And it is no fun to look like you're, you know, 80 when you're 40, I'm guessing, since I am, since you said I look 25. Um, but I did run into somebody at the grocery store yesterday. And um, did you ever see the peanuts where they're, where, uh, like Schroeder, not Schroeder, but like Pigpen has a, like, just dirt and like smells around him and Charles Schultz was so smart about what that looked like this man and this woman they just look like they had a dirt cloud around them and they smelled like old ashtray and refrigerator exhaust and um and I really had to back up because I was like woof that is a lot going on there and they were in between me and the organic milk <laughs> and I was like get away but I, I and they and their skin was gray like how do how does one get that color skin that looks like an old paper bag that's all been crushed up okay and they just looked like resigned versus um do they are they embracing the, their life do they have something that drives them and you know bless their hearts i was happy when they left the area i was in but I, it did make me think about what we're talking about today is legacy what do you what lessons do you have what can you share don't keep all your wisdom to yourself that's a lot of 
what we what you and I believe. But can you talk a little bit more about how how your how your beliefs about legacy have evolved from maybe what your you you started talking about what your father had taught you and what you believe today or what you're living today? So you said several things that caught my attention. First of all, by the way, milk organic is nice, but you shouldn't really be drinking too much milk at all. There's no no mammals, uh, no animal that that drinks as an adult milk. But if you're going right. to drink, milk, it was oat milk. I mean, okay. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the milk is the A2. A2 milk has got uh, is has not got an ingredient which is carcinogenic as casein in it. It's a different type of cow. So Google that and check it out. The other mm -hmm. thing is everything in life becomes a compound effect a little bit every day. You know, you said we have a finite life. Of course we do. But here's the good news. Every single morning, we have a bank account of 1,440 minutes that is replenished every single day. What are we going to do with that new bank account, which has just been filled? with our time for the next 1,440 minutes. Wow, it's an exciting moment every single moment, every single morning, I mean, because we've just been replenished with the full bank account for the next 1,440 minutes. And everybody's on the same playing field. It's the common factor for everybody. The other thing is I was taught to preempt regrets. Wow. So I have never in my life taken a recreational drug. Never. Not because I'm a prude. I don't care what other people do. It's me. I'm not going to do that because I have my own feelings about my own values and what I feel. I never wanted to be out of control. I never wanted to, you know, say, well, unfortunately, I did that when I was drunk or never going to happen. So preempting regrets. So if you're going to do something, be proud of whatever you're going to do. Don't do something and then say, well, I hope it, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. Forget about all that. that. That doesn't happen. So the compound effect. And by the way, the choices we make, you mentioned also how and why. And it's just choices. But be bold enough to take the choices, make the choices, even though they're not popular. Even though they're not popular, even though you're not going with a crowd, doesn't matter. It's who you are and what it is you want. So, you know, there's so many, many people that are over 50 that live in the past. And yeah. say, oh, you know, I remember in the 80s, and I do the same. I mean, I refer to the past a lot, obviously, because it's a long past. But but there's, there's so much more excitement in the future. And if we look at that and we say, well, you know, I can't do that anymore. Well, says who? Says who? Or, yes, or it's too late. It's too late. That's what I, that people ask me a lot when they think, I've, I've always wanted to write a book, but is it too late? Like, uh, do you have a pencil and a piece of paper that exactly. it's not too late? Exactly. It's nothing is ever too late. There's no age requirement for wisdom or sharing or uh, productivity or community. There's 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 no entrance fee. You can just do it. Yes, yeah. Nike, just do it. You know, there was a, I saw, a, there was a, there was a guy, I think it was in Tasmania or somewhere. He was a political prisoner or something. And he wrote a book on his, on his cell phone. He wrote a book on his cell phone. I mean, texting, writing, hell, I mean, seriously? Oh. So there's no, you know, I go around with this thing on my arm, which says no more excuses. And I give it to everybody. No more excuses. And I've got one. I've got it in Spanish. I've got it in blue and white and whoever it is. Because. Well, I want one. Well, you're welcome to have one. <laughs> um, because they're, they're, I think it's sad when we have to make excuses. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Why are you late? 
It's no bloody excuse for that. Everybody, it's the same time for everybody else. Oh, the traffic. Traffic was the same for me as for you. Be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, let's look at respect for everybody. Let's look at respect for ourselves. Let's look for respect for everybody else. Who are you? How do you want to conduct your life? It's just, it's just about just being proud and being happy and being comfortable in your own skin and being proactive and looking forward to something new that you can that you can participate in that you can be part of you know mm. and, and there's, there's there's really no look there's there's a I saw a, again another documentary of the blue zones the centenaria cent, centenaria yeah. around the world there's a guy in Costa Rica is 100 years old riding his horse I fully intend to go and join him and ride my horse at 100 mm. why not I, I saw him. Him. I was like, that is a good horse, but he I just popped the right up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's, yeah. Um, let me, let me ask about, you know, the, the thing about life stories, because we, we said we we're going to talk about the art of legacy, but also there is an art to living the story and then, or li living your legacy, but also sharing and that's where, you know, the the act of documenting, and it doesn't have to be you toiling at your computer or a typewriter, you know, of like, let me document my life. But when you have a, a, assembled some wisdom or listen, lessons or insight, or you know how to do something that other people don't know how to do, I I feel like there's a there's a loss of these anecdotes. Well, first of all, there's a loss of the lesson, but the anecdotes that go along with the lesson that make them stick. And that's unfortunate that, um, that also as people age and they retire and they do fade away, that our access to them becomes limited because they're not that visible because again, they've retired. They're not seen by that many people. So what I wanna you know, shake everyone to know is if you feel like you have, a, have something to share, freaking write it down. And it doesn't have to be a book. It could be an article. It could be a LinkedIn newsletter. It could be a social post. It could be a letter for your kid or your grandkid or your neighbor or the local historical society. I mean, if, if we keep, it's not enough to have the lesson or just to donate, you know, the maybe like a memento the story around it is what makes it riveting. How do you suggest people document or share their life lessons? Because okay. here you are, you're doing it. Okay, so <laughs> stories sell, facts tell. Mm -hmm. Stories sell. And I'm not just talking about money. So there's a book called The Silent Warrior. There's a movie also. And it's about an Olympian who breaks his leg. He has a motorcycle accident and breaks his leg. And he wants to give up. He just wants to give up. And he meets, and I think the guy in the movie was a guy called was McNulty or Nick Nolte or whatever his name was. And he was like a sort of a guru there. And he said, no, 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 you're not going to give up. You're not going to retire from trying to be an Olympian. You're going to, we're going to work at it. And he trained and trained and trained and kept training and so on. And then one day the guy said, I'm going to take you somewhere tomorrow when he was already getting strong and he's able to walk and to run and so on. I want to take you somewhere tomorrow. I'm going to show you something amazing. She says, okay. So they went up this mountain and they kept walking up this mountain. And the guy said, what are you going to show me? He said, where do we get there? You'll see. And they walked up the mountain. They finally got to the top. And the fellow said, well, 
what are you going to show me? He said, I want to show you the stone. What are you talking about? He said, you were so intent on the, on the destination, you forgot about the journey. Didn't you see the amazing views? Didn't you see the trees and the birds and the, the smell, the fresh air? You were so intent on what I'm going to show you, you didn't even look at the journey. And this is what it's about. It's about the journey. But it's about being able to talk about the journey where people will understand and will be able to share what you have seen. So if you are on that journey and you stop and you say, whoa, look at this little stream here. Wow. The, you know, the, the fish in there and whatever, you know, flowers. Wow. So there's, you punctuate the journey with your personal experience if you're aware. If you're not aware and you don't allow yourself to be aware, you'll be blinded by the destination and not the journey. And that's what it's about. It's about opening your eyes on the journey and being aware. And when you fail, it's one of the things my dad said also, fess up to your mistakes. If you make a mistake, be honest. Talk about it. Look, I've really screwed up. I made a mistake here. So learn from the mistakes. Grow from the mistakes. This is a great thing too. I love it. When you, when you, you know, I've made so many mistakes. I've failed many times. I've just a lot of times. In fact, I've even lost everything I own three times because I lived in war zones and whatever. But what did you learn from that? What did you learn? What were the lessons? Wow. Pick yourself up. Have fun with it. Learn. And then help somebody else from avoiding, from falling into the same hole that you did. Well, mm -hmm. right. So yeah, the I'm journey sure. is, it's about, it's about facts tell but stories sell so if you've got doesn't matter what the story is you know the person that that invented the um velcro he's a guy who was who had this these these things that stuck to him and he invented the guy probably boring as hell but guess what he invented something that changed the world there's a big story there so no matter what we do, no matter what we've done, no matter who we are, we all have a story. And if we if we can if we can extract extract from that story something that is positive or negative that we can share and help somebody, I think that becomes worthwhile. I I completely agree and you've blown my mind with that story about the getting to the top of the mountain and seeing the stone because that's what i recognize about the traditional uh, call it american career is that people see it as a series of milestones instead of a, a, a long road and it doesn't have to be uphill but you do get to enjoy and also talk about the stream that you're passing. It's not, okay, I got to this step and now I can rejoice and you only get, you know, five moments or you have to get to the end in order to then share what you know. You know, the worst thing you can do if you're thinking about writing a book and you're an expert in your field, the worst thing you can do is wait until you retire because you're not on the path anymore you're fading away and and you're not in it nobody wants to hear your you know you if if you're like okay well now now i have time no everybody has time it's you didn't devote the time you i you know i just couldn't find the time like well, time exists like the, these are not good good excuses and the other, the other thing that gets in people's way is um, humility of like, well, I wouldn't call myself an expert. Ah, oh, if I had a nickel for every time that, you know, your humility gets in the way of people sharing their wisdom and it's boring. 
as soon as I hear that, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I can't convince you, you know? Uh, and I think that there's a certain type of person who maybe they didn't become a CEO. They think they need to ask permission or they see someone else as, you know, the expert voice in a certain subject and they just don't, they think, well, that person is the one who should be writing, but I can't write the book or I can't be a public speaker about this topic. Like mm, there's room for everybody, you know, for sure. Even if you think the, you know, the, the market is crowded, there are a plenty of people who don't follow the person that you're, that you think is the cat's, yeah, you know, the cat's pajamas or the bee's knees. They're, there's a, there's someone out there that needs the wisdom that you have and the stories, not just your list of, you know, top 10 things to do when you're living your life. It has to be packaged, right? Can I, can I tell you quick about the mountain? Yeah. So my son-in-law and my daughter live in Geneva. So we were in Geneva and I said to my son-in-law, I said, you know, we, we're very close to Gruyere where they make the cheese. And I said, well, I, I, you know, we'd like to go there. So my wife said, yeah, Lily, it's a great idea. So we got in the car and we, he said, go down this road, wherever it is. It's about 45 minutes from here. So we got in the car and drove. And I don't know, an hour and a half later, we're driving around and I said, you know, I, Wow, it's beautiful. My wife said, you know, we've been driving for an hour and a half. We still haven't, not even close to Gruyere. Where is it? We must be lost. We've been past this mountain three times. <laughs> Same thing. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that we'd been around the mountain three times because I saw something new every time I drove around there. So the moral, and I said, eventually we found a place and it was a truck stop. And I said, and it said Gruyere. And I said, oh, there it is. She said, don't be ridiculous. So she got out and asked, because a man, you know, we don't ask directions. So she got out, she asked, and I said, yeah, it's another 40 minutes this way. <laughs> so we finally got there and what have you. But the point was, and I said to my wife, I said, you know, babe, I didn't care about going to Gruyere. I was so enjoyed the drive, the, the journey the mountains and the snow and the trees and all this kind of stuff was for me was like, whoa. And the destination is just icing on the cake. But it was, she was so intent on going to see this Gruyere because she's very, very, you know, goal oriented. Not even that, I'm saying that I may be exaggerating, but she's, she's, she was very focused on where she's focused. There we go. She's focused. So I'm just saying. So, the other thing about time, you know, if we, they talk about doing journaling. And I think even if you're 25 or you're 50 or you're 70, it doesn't matter. You've got something that happened during that day or that week that impacted you. And it could be, it could be an encounter with somebody. It could be something you saw. It could be something you felt. Write it down. I agree with you. Write down because at that time you've got the emotion which has, which has ignited something inside you, a reaction. An emotion has ignited. Something has emote, in, uh, ignited an emotion inside you. Write it down. And that little emotion may be a pearl of wisdom for somebody else. Mm-hmm. It may be something, wow, for somebody else. And it, it's something that impacted you. It may be nothing for somebody else. But there are a lot of people that we can, we can impact by, by telling the story, by being able to tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because there's something there for everybody. There's an inspiration if it's good. There's an inspiration if it's bad. How not to do it? So, in the in one of your recent newsletters, you talked about how the negative wolf and the positive wolf. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit and how you? Uh, I just started picturing the my wolf 
just like my negative wolf smoking a cigarette, drinking out of a paper bag, you know, trying to lead me uh, into, you know, into a dark alley. Can you explain that? I'm not sure if it was Napoleon Hill that wrote a book called, um, oh dear, it was called, uh, oh, I'll think of it in a second. But basically, we have our little wolves here, positive and negative. Which is the wolf that's going to thrive? It's the one you feed. If mm -hmm. you feed the negative wolf, you're feeding negativity and it will grow and grow and grow and grow. If you feed the positive one, that's the one that will grow. So kill the negative one. Ignore it. Let it starve to death. Anything that's negative, anything that is not something that is going to contribute positively, let it die. Let it die. And so if we, if we know that in our mind we've got a constant discussion, we've got a dialogue going on, oh, I don't know if I can do that, oh, I'm not sure I can do that, that's uncertainty, that's negativity. Get out of your mind. Of course I can do it. And then figure out how. First say you can, and then figure out how you're going to do it. Right. Even though you're not sure. Right. I mean, you can't just keep it in your mind and think, oh, you know, someday I've always wanted to, I mean, to fill in the blank, do anything. I've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to write a book. I've always wanted to, uh, you know, learn how to play the piano. Like, uh, first of all, there's no time like the present. Um, the only person who is coming up with reasons why you can't do that is you. So if that's, you know, if you've, you know, imprinted of like, oh, I don't have an ear for music. Well, then I guess you don't. That's a, that's your negative wolf. Outwitting oh, I can devil. never be a writer. Mm. Outwitting the devil. That's the book that I was talking about. Outwitting the devil. Outwitting the devil. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, you mentioned something else quickly. I'll mention this landmark forum. That, if anybody doesn't know what it is, it's uh, it's really useful because it will find, for example, if someone says, oh, I, I don't think I can be good at art. In the landmark forum, they get people to come in and they delve into the origin of how and why they think certain things. So there may be a room full of people, 500 people in the room, and they'll say, who loves art? Okay. Who hates art? Oh, come up and tell me. So why don't you like art? What don't you like about it? Why are you unsure about art? And they keep asking question, 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 until they find that the person was maybe six years old in the art class, and the teacher said something like, that's terrible. Look at Cynthia. She's got such a nice drawing. And look at yours. It's horrible. And that is the switch off for the rest of their lives to think in a certain mm -hmm. way. So that's why I always say, who are you? And why do you think like you do? Because we go to the origins of how we think. And that's how we can find why we are, why we think the way we do. Wow. Well, that's a Perfect thing. Perfect thing to end on. If you, um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna invite people to subscribe to your newsletter from Ordinary to Exceptional. It is such a delight every time I read it, and not, I, and it's just, it's like the message that I need to hear every single time. And also, if you are, if you think you have a book in you. Don't, first of all, do not freaking wait. You have to take action. And at the very least, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I could tell you all about how it works. But also, uh, come to, I, I host, uh, on February 27th, I'm hosting a, another four-day series that's free of how to get your book in the world. So, come register. You, it's free. It's on LinkedIn. We love it around here. Um, of course, reach out to Lawrence if you 
and, and comment on his newsletters. They're so, so good. And plus the images are so good. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for, um, for sharing this and for um, delighting us with your stories. I'm going to be thinking about your trip to the Gruyere truck stop now. <laughs> well, Alison, thank you. Because actually, you know, what goes around comes around. And, you know, thank you so much for having the time, taking the time to, uh, you know, for this, this uh, talk. And I'm so grateful to you. And I wish you the success that you deserve. And anybody that has any idea about anything, write it down, get hold of Alison and say, listen, I, I had a, I, I've been thinking about something. Come on. Let her help you do that. Let her help you write your book, write your legacy. Legacy is something we leave behind. It doesn't have to be money. It could be your experience. It could be your time. It could be your, your, your whatever it is in your life that you've done that may help somebody do or make some decisions that will help them. So, Alison, you rock. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I will see. I'll see you next week. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Right. God bless. Bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.